So let's get started for today. Um, thank you everyone for coming to the live streams. The live streams are on YouTube and Twitch now, as long as Restream.io allows me to split stream without any crashes. Portrait Studio is currently on sale. That's the big one. That's the big, huge one. Portrait Studio and my masterclass. Why are they relevant? Why is that important? Because today you will see the power of Portrait Studio and its educational power, as well as its um, reference generation power, but also I'll be looking at a portrait and I'll be talking about all the basics of blocking, the blocks that you guys miss when you start a portrait. And all of the blocks I wanted to mention, the reason my masterclass is so different from every other masterclass in, in, available right now is that my portraiture master, masterclass has a set of notes that provide, that list down for you every possible brushstroke you could make. This is what sets my masterclass apart from the others, is that I have a concrete list written by me and it's written by a teacher, so I know how students think, I know what information they want, I know how they like things worded, but I know how you guys think, and after teaching for a decade, I know what information you guys are looking for, and some of you just want that list of blocks. Tell me where to put my paint. A lot of people tell me that, and that's what my masterclass offers, that's what sets it apart from the others. It's very easy to follow, it's, it's fail-proof, um, very small margin of failure when using my masterclass, and it's versatile. It's 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 it allows you to adjust a lot of the you know the likeness and it comes with templates, so you don't have to feel like you're you're, you're just ending up with the same face. Um, it is female front view, three quarter view, and male will be added later on to my Gumroad page. Male may be added to this uh, this package here, so you'll get it all in one. And three quarter view will be a separate package somewhere around January when I release it. Um, right now I'm a bit swamped with work, so it's hard for me to focus on a whole new project, but it will be released. The knowledge is there in my mind. It just needs to be turned into a masterclass. So both of these, Masterclass and Portrait Studio, are extremely low right now in my store. Um, and it's the, one of the lowest prices you'll get in the year. And it's almost uh, New Year's resolution time. It's almost around that time where people really want to start changing the way they study, start changing the way they approach the knowledge, approach the techniques. And not only do you get three and a half hours of just content, um, saturated content, ask anybody who's used it, it's a lot of information, but you get something that helps you process that information. I don't just throw a big block of a uh, video to you. I, I uh, t break apart that video into notes that are synced with the video. So you're never lost. All you gotta do, if, you, if you're confused, just pause it and you get the entire content you just listened to for like the last 10 minutes reiterated into text and you have lists and where to put these brush strokes and when to blend and where to blend and a blending map and it's just foolproof, uh, failure proof, beginner proof and it offers something to even advanced students who don't know how to push or intermediate students into advanced who don't know how to push into advanced. When I want to basically, what I want to basically do is give you a quick sample of what it's like to have your, you know, blocks listed out for you and um, some of the blocks, just a quick little tip, and this isn't actually in the masterclass, some of the blocks that you have aren't blocks because of technique. They're not blocks because it's my opinion that this will make your work faster. Some of these blocks are actually um, just based off the anatomical content of the face. So really it's up to you at this moment where you start the first line, but we're looking for three lines right now. We're going to leave this red map turned on and what I'm going to do is show you that this isn't necessarily technique. This is the actual mathematical, mechanical breakdown of the human face. So you see this line right here? This line isn't just telling you where to find the eyebrow. These lines actually tell you, and listen to this, they actually tell you where to stop the shadow of the eye socket. And a lot of you don't know how to do this part. A lot of you are really confused with the edge of the eye. Do I just like keep blending? Do I just keep doing this until it starts to look better? Like it, what do I do with the eye at this point when I reach the corner of the eye and get into the temple? And I don't blame you because it is confusing. It's almost camouflaged. You don't really notice that part of the face. But this is how you get to make sure like you're, you're not adding too much shadow. Because right now it looks like she has a lot of makeup just drooping off the side of her eye 
into the side of her face. So we want to stop that. Because, why? Because the eye socket doesn't extend all the way out there. Yes, the side of the head has a bit of a shadow drop, for sure, but we don't want it to look like we have completely used valley sharing and thrown off the pigmentation or added some kind of artifact on the face. And then we're going to draw another little quick light block right here. So far we've got two. The first one is basically working with the eyebrow edge. All right. And this all gets blended, so none of this really stays that geometric. So don't worry about it looking too hacked and kind of blocky. I'm going to blend this out. And I'm just going to use my soft brush to, to kind of work in tandem with my smudge brush to create that final finish. And I'm just radially climbing up and out. Okay, so you got rid of all my shadow, Istabrak. Now I don't really see any more contrast in this area, and it looks a bit too washed out. Pure black, low opacity, soft brush. Brush stroke number one, number two, and I'm shrinking my brush as I apply more paint along that crease line. So now I have a very accurate, no, I have a very precise placement where I put this paint and that's for the sake of that crease. So now you get all that contrast you lost a second ago because of my edits. Because look at this big block. Just compare it over here. You just sprayed it with shadow and it did nothing. All right, and so I, I did the same thing. I climbed the values like a sand pile. Just imagine you picked up a bunch of sand in your hand and you slowly let it out of your hands. It creates a little hill, right? So that sand pile hill that happens naturally as you, let the, as you let the sand through your palm between your hands is the same concept of what radial shading is. You're allowing thin layers of paint to climb up, to auto blend as they climb up and create the illusion of volume. I put both side by side because one is rendered and polished, one isn't, shows a bit more of the planes of the head. So what you did before, let's look at the mannequin instead first. You added a shadow on her face that built up this way, which makes sense if only one eye had this extra shadow, but it wasn't, it was both eyes. So no matter how, what I do with Portrait Studio, unless I'm doing this, does this lighting happen? So this is not physically possible in the world of light uh, so then let's look at where the shadow of yours extended to the lower lash, the lower eyelid. Okay, let's say your your eyes are doing this right now. So, okay, Istabrak, you, you may have been right about the temple, but any anyone can just paint a darker, you know, higher point in the light. So this is the light high. You see how only the top of the head gets it. And this is the light at four, um, 45 degrees, somewhere around here. So maybe they were right about their eye socket shadow. But look at what happened to the nose. For the eye socket shadow to get to this level, the nose is traveling all the way through onto the chest. Same thing with the high poly model. So what's happening here? You have, you're guessing your light. I don't know why you're guessing it, because you don't actually have to guess your light if you just did more form studies, plain studies of the head, um, blocking studies, all of that. So even in my master class, the block list that I give you is not technical opinion. It's not optional. The blocks that I tell you to put in for top-down lighting are physically sound, are structurally sound. They are universal. So just because my result was a pretty girl doesn't mean that these are the only, there are blocks for only pretty girl faces. These are universal human genetics and how the human face develops across all faces of the globe cheekbones, nose, nose, forehead, eye socket, eye socket on the skeletal level, the puckering of the upper lip, the chin, these are all standard blocks that you have to know. Because if you had known your blocks, you would have known that you should not be value sharing on the temple with a top down lighting with a shadow. This is where I always go, the shadow of the nose. I match the shadow of the nose on my reference to know what, what is happening with the rest of the face. So if we look at the high poly model, this is technically where we should be. A small little pocket of shadow on the deepest point of the eye socket, and that's it. 
if you, this is the painting, not drawing. I'm talking about painting, rendering, be it from reference or no reference. Blocking is the only way to approach it. Blocking does not invite unnecessary early premature blending. Blocking helps you focus on where the light source is coming from. Huge fundamental. Why can we even see this object if not for the light source? And blocking helps you match your values a little bit earlier so that you know what's too much contrast, what's too little contrast early on um, and uh, fix them instead of having to throw too many problems to solve in the later stage. Okay, so if you're curious, this is Portrait Studio and it is, yes, on sale right now on my store if you want it, as well as my master class, which tells you where to pl place all these brush strokes. So both of these are on sale and both of these can help you and I don't believe I've priced them unfairly considering the information that they uh, provide that they offer the revolution in your art that they offer I believe the price is fair and st the standard price is fair but now it's even lower so please consider going to my store estabrack.com to have a look at both there's a lot of information and reading before you buy it so before you commit you could take a look at how it's used in my store page you can see um, if you click on Portrait Studio, it gives you a whole rundown of everything it can offer, a video made by Abu himself, and a video made by me on how I use it, so a quick sample of how I've used it in the past. Um, and on my master class, I believe there are some reviews there. Uh, this is a relatively new product, so as I teach, technique and knowledge are interwoven. Um, why is this technique beneficial? Because it supports the knowledge, and why is this knowledge what we focus on? and how it's preserved through the technique. And then uh, for this one, before, after, it's just a huge class. It's a huge amount of information that took me half a year to build. Um, so um, it's a lot. It definitely gives you what you pay for and more, I believe. Um, so thank you guys for watching. If you can, please go to the community tab, click on the Discord server and join us on Discord. Right now, Discord, my Discord is hosting a sketchtober challenge and it's really really fun because you you can see oh these are my sketches um you can see a lot of what people are working on it's really really fun um there's people who model there's people who just use their their traditional sketching materials um there's people who paint the illustration completely um it's really really up to you what, how you want to uh take on the challenge the the prompts are pinned at the top for sketchtober we just finished sketchtember please join us on my Discord. It's easier for me to send out notifications for when I'm live, and it's just so much better for community discussion. Um, so I'll see you guys there on my Discord. Thank you guys for watching, and thank you guys for joining today for the live streams. The live streams are every Tuesday and Thursday. I'll see you guys next Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern time. And by the way, today, October 6th, is Abu's birthday. Uh, I don't know what this community would be without him. Please wish him a happy birthday. Bye, guys.